Hello everybody, my name is Alan from Sauber Lab and today will be another video about TrueNAS. This video specifically we're gonna show a little bit more about TrueNAS SK revision 23.10 and in this revision you're gonna see that I have lots of updates and lots of more stability in your system. This one I'm compared for my previous video where I record about one year ago and I explained about TrueNAS scale and that in that stage have a lot of bugs, a lot of things that was not working the way that we expect and now it's work much better. Principally for this new revision they have much more applications, they work with Docker compared for the TrueNAS core that work with a free DBS and you cannot install Docker unless you do a virtual machine and other applications. This TrueNAS scale basically work much better and with this new revision they are more stable. So if you like this idea and want to learn a little bit more about it, we're going to show you this video, but first of all, don't forget to leave a like, consider subscribe for the channel if you're not subscribed yet, and let's understand a little bit more about it. So before we start to do any installation, any configuration in our TrueNAS, we need to understand what we're going to use. So here on my screen, I have my TrueNAS and it's the official website for the TrueNAS and what I'm using, I select the TrueNAS scale and here's the page. So the application that we're going to install or the revision of TrueNAS that we're going to install, it's revision 23.10.01. And if I come here in release note, they just released it around one month ago in the 31st of October 2023. In this case, they explain all the fixtures, what has been updated, what has been done and how it's going to work. But we're not going to worry about it because I'm going to show a lot of things that you need to have in mind for this application. So we can come here and we can review the minimal requirements. For this TrueNAS work, I need to have at least dual core. I need to have at least 8GB of RAM, it's recommended 16. I need to have at least uh, 16 gigabytes of boot, what's recommended you have two exactly the same and that you use as a mirror between themselves and if one fail you still have your data they don't recommend you you use a USB stick because this one potentially can fail and that you lose or potentially can disconnect it and here they will go for full requirements you need what you need to have how much memory what specific recommends but we're not going to worry about it so first thing you need to download it and once that you download we're gonna run it what i suggest you is to get a computer prepare it yourself have a uh, eight gigabytes of run memory minimum dual core and that with this system you go there and flash this usc that you just download or this so that you just download with balena edge you put in a usb stick and that you do the installation in our case, because I only want to show this video, I'm gonna run in a virtual machine, but I don't recommend you to use a virtual machine. First thing, if I open my virtual box, here's the information that I have, and we're gonna use this virtual machine. This virtual machine have one hard drive of 25 gigabytes, another hard drive with 50 gigabytes, and another one with five gigabytes. This one for five gigabytes, I want to do a cache, this 50 gigabytes will be my hard drive and this 25 will be my OS. Also, I'd add my TrueNAS scale as optical, I could be as a USB stick. And here I'm using an adapter directly for my network card, so it's a bridge configuration. In this way, if uh, my router identify this computer, they will think that's a real computer, an address, a MAC address, IP address, and everything else. So I have this one in mind, what we can do is start this virtual machine and start to do the installation. So let's do it. So first time that you open this virtual machine, you need to be physically in the computer and that will have this information. Start through NASA's key installation, we're going to start it, and that uh, we can do the installation. The installation is really easy, but I will go step by step and jump a little bit to avoid too much delays for this installation. So first thing, they will ask you to install or update. In our case, we're gonna install, put enter, and that they ask you to choose what 
SSD or what hard drive that you want. In my case, it will be the 25 GB. One thing interesting that I have another hard drive of 5 GB that did not appear at all. This one, because the minimum requirement is 16, so everything that under they will not show to avoid that you install by mistake and that uh, will not work properly. So now that I decide my 25 GB, I can put enter. The only advice that you should not use a flash drive because if it's connect, you can lose all your data. It's instant information, but it's important you to have in mind. I put enter and that I can define my admin user. So now I'll set my password. And now they will start to install. This installation can take some time. And now they will give this information about legacy booting or EFI. If you are, have an old system, of course, go to legacy. If you have a new system, go to FAI. In our case, we're going to allow the EFI and I will put yes. So now they will mount my SD card or my hard drive and it started to do all the installation. This installation will take some minutes. What I need to do in this installation, I need to wait to finish. Once that finished, they will appear the message that the installation has been completed. Once that complete, I need to remove my USB stick from my computer and restart my computer. After restart, it will take some minutes as well to download all the configuration, set up everything, and your screen will appear the IP address that uh, this machine has been configured. With this IP address, then you can access. So let's wait to finish to install this stage. Once that your system restart, you're gonna have this page where they will show what IP address that you need to access. In my case, the IP address that I need to access will be 192.168.1.180. So let's access it. And we're gonna use the user admin and we're gonna use exactly the same password that you configured before. Now we are inside the TrueNAS. And if you look for the TrueNAS, I'm using revision 23.10.01. And here all the information, how much of my CPU it's using, how much run memory I'm using, if I have multiple network cards, they will appear different IP address and different connections for each one here. So first thing that we need to do before we go here in the part of application, we need to configure our pool. And this pool can be configured in storage. So let's come here in storage. And here in storage, we need to create our pool. So let's click create pool. And here we need to define the name of my pool. So the name of my pool will be home and I can encrypt it or not. Only remember, if you encrypt your data, you need to keep your key safe because if you lose your key, you're not gonna be able to recover your data unless you copy this data out because TrueNAS don't give an option to recover. Principally, if this encryption type, they will take a long time for you to brute force it. So let's cancel and don't run it. So now, if I click in data, will be defined what's the main source. In the data, you can define how will be the layout of your hard drives. So if I use only one hard drive, you need to go for a strip. If I use two hard drives, but I want to make a big hard drive without a redundancy, will be strip. If I go to my mirror, I need to have at least two hard drives, and it means that will be a mirror between hard drives, and anything else will be different RAID types. If you want to do a RAID 5, I suggest you go for RAID 01, if you want to go uh, rate 6, I suggest you to go rate 2. Anything else, it's a little bit over the board, but rate 5 will be okay if you have three hard drives. So in this way, we're gonna go for a strip because I have only one hard drive. And here, because I have one hard drive of 5 and one hard drive of 50, they will give this option. If I have more than one hard drive exactly the same, if I have more hard drives the same, they will already suggest the allocate capacity. Suppose that I want to do RAID 5 and I have 4 hard drives of uh, 4 terabytes. So they will show me 12 terabytes instead of uh, 4 terabytes each. So in my case, I will select 50 gigabytes and I will come manual selection. And that they already assigned these 50 gigabytes for me. If I have more hard drives, they will assign other hard drives here. So now I can come here and put next. This is the time that you can create the first cache. It's optional, you don't need to create it, but this is the cache, right cache. What it means? It means that all your data will come initially for this cache and that they will move for your computer or your hard drives. 
It means that this cache will speed your system and once that your hard drive is trying to record, they will take this initial hit. The only problem is that if you use only one and your hard drive or your SSD fail, all the data that's recording this SSD is lost. So have in mind, if you want to use this one, I suggest you to use a mirror, but Trunas will not avoid it. If you want to use a single strip and only one hard drive, you can do it, but they will say, if this hard drive or this SSD fail, your data is lost. Take careful. So in our case, we're gonna do it because it's exactly the same hard drive as the other 50 gigabytes. But if you go to production, I suggest you use two SSDs in parallel mirror to avoid that if one loose or disappear, you still have the data for the second one and that this second one have enough time to copy this data for your hard drive before they vanish. So now we can go back you can select some spares, so in the case of a one hard drive fail, you still have some spare data there. If you come here for cache, this LARC will be only read cache, it means that uh, they will analyze all your data, the things that you access more often, they will live in this ARC or this written cache. In this way, they will access first those in a cache with fast speed, and the application or the files that you don't use so often, they will be stored in your hard drive. This one is only to save time and remember, in this case you don't need to be a mirror or don't need to be redundancy of your hard drive because they will have a copy for your data from your hard drive to your SSD. They will not keep only in this SSD because initially it will be only a copy that you're doing. Once that you finalize this data and you look like Excel and you want to save, they will not save in this SD, they will save directly in your hard drive. So the, sa the read will be fast, the save will take a little bit longer. And here deep up, you can configure some storage, but now we can review all the information and they already give this information that you are using a log and this log, if stop to work this SSD, your data is lost. Also, they say that you're not doing redundancy for your hard drives. So this redundancy will be rate 5 meter, and if this hard drive fail, all the data that it's this 5 gigabyte, it's gone. So have this one in mind. Anyway, we can come here and put create pool, and I confirm I wanted to raise my data in my hard drives and I'll put continue. Now in this stage, they will create my pool. They will take some minutes until they create, and once that is created, we can go for the next stage. The next stage will be create a data set. Once that your data set has been created, you're gonna have this topology. This topology they will show what kind of data set that you create. And in this case, I have only one data, no redundancy. This reason that I have this flag, because if my data or my hard drive fail, my data is lost. Other thing, it's log, that will be my write and cache. What is strange for me that you not have a flag, but in my point of view, if uh, the data of this SD lost, all the data that was there could potentially get lost as well. Here will be how much space that I use and what's the space that I have. Here will be the ZFF health. Normally I suggest you to create a scrambling task for your data. So if any data is damaged or corrupt, they will check it and fix it. It's one of the good things for ZFS that will guarantee that all time your data is safe and good. Also, the disk health, you can set up some smart. If your data starts to come end of the life, they will give some information for you that uh, you need to swap your hard drive. Of course, it's not perfectly, but at least it's a kind of protection. And here will be the average temperature because I'm using a virtual machine. They will not have average temperature because it's not a physical hard drives. So it's impossible to measure temperature. Now we can come here in my data set and here I can create my data set. For this video, I'm not going to show how you can create data sets, how you can create shares and how you can create permissions for user because I'm more focused with the applications. Maybe next videos I will show a little bit more but I already post some videos explain step by step, so I don't believe that will be so much different. What I want to show in this video now is the applications. If I come here in the application, first thing that I need to do is select my pool. So if I come here, choose a pool, I can choose that I want to install all my application home and put choose. 
what they're gonna do they will create a folder or share folder inside this pool only dedicated for my apps so if i install any app they will give uh, or they will save in that specific location or a specific share what it's dedicated for my docker so let's wait they finish this first stage once that you create once that you select your pool now we can start to discover the applications and here in discover application you have 99 applications available for you and here you can start to install so if you put view all now you have 99 different applications compared for previous revision you have only four or five applications and if you want to install more you need to install a repository that will allow you to install more but now you don't need to do it pretty much most of the applications that you want to install is here suppose that you want to install nextcloud so nextcloud here photo prisma net data Warring Guard, AMB Server, Plex Server, Media Service, and other things. So, in this way, make your life much easier because to install it is really simple. You can come here, next cloud, click next cloud, and you can click install. Once that you agree that you want to install, and that they will give the next page. This next page that will be the configuration for next cloud. So here will be the name, the version, the certification that I want to use. I suggest you to use no certification because we're going to use the Cloudflare tunnel or the NX proxy manager. This is no certification, it's totally fine. Here will be the IP address, the user, your password that you can use. So I suggest you to change this password, where will be saved the data and continue on. And basically all the information is here. If you want to add some extra storage, you can come here and add some extra storage and uh, you can do everything that you want so now we can put install and that they will start to install all the application we start to deploy and that uh, you know that uh, it's ready when they will give the information for start so let's wait once that you do this initial stage they will appear deploy and here they will show what they are doing in the event if you have any database or any information here all the application informations and what kind of uh, ports that you use and once that they finish you can come here and put web portal and you can access it now different for the previous revision if you want to install Cloudflare Tunnel it's really simple you can come here and install Cloudflare Tunnel and it's done if you want to install Proxy Manager it's exactly simple as well you can locate the application that you want and install and only you need to do some small configurations the same one that you're gonna do in the case of environmental in this way we arrive at the end of the video if you guys like this video and want me to explain a little bit more about this revision of uh, TrueNAS and what you can do please leave your comment below and if not I hope that you guys like if you like don't forget to leave your like consider subscribe for the channel if you're not subscribed yet and see you next time bye